Martin Childs, you uh, won an Oscar for Shakespeare in Love, which uh, was about Queen Elizabeth uh, the first, I believe. And now you're back to television with The Crown, which is all about Queen Elizabeth the second. Um, so do you do anything other than make shows and films about queens or? <laughs> queens are my speciality, because I also did Mrs. Brown about Queen Victoria. Um, but uh, yeah, I do, I do branch out from, from, from the Queen brief sometimes, um, and even occasionally do contemporary, but uh, it is mostly period, period pictures that I design. Well, looking at your filmography, you can certainly see why they would go to you to do this, because you do, as you say, do a lot of period work. You also know how to create scale and scope, which this show has a lot of. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about creating that sense of scale and scope for television? Absolutely. Well, I, I treated this like a like a feature film, and I've seen it projected on a big screen. So for me, I, I try very hard to not make a difference between television and feature films. And I think that the boundaries are blurring so much in in the, in the way in, in in the general sort of zeitgeist of things. So um, I I refuse to see the difference. Um, so I treat every TV show like it's a movie. And so I the, the big. I, th I suppose the challenge with this was to find something that would convey the scale of Buckingham Palace. And Buckingham Palace is enormous. There was an early draft of Peter Morgan's script that uses, used the words, um, the sheer mileage of the place. And I think that was not, not in the dialogue, but it was in a stage direction. So I, I kind of thought, how do we do the sheer mileage of the place when uh, we can't actually build miles? Because I knew that we wouldn't be on the same location all the time. So, um, uh, and we couldn't, you know, justify building an entire palace um, that we would spend time on because the royal family moved about so much. So what I thought we would never be able to find on location um, is the private apartments. So I, I decided that we should build the private apartments, uh, which are partly, they're 90% researched, 10% my imagination of storytelling. Um, and somehow uh, attach those visually to uh, all of the locations that are available. And I know a number of, a lot of locations, but I was shown new ones by Pat Caron, our location manager. And so the, the job for me felt like sort of connecting all of these places, finding a, a consistent color and a consistent look throughout them all so that all of these houses could play the part of Buckingham Palace. Talk a little bit about uh the research that you did uh, to prepare for this? Yeah. Um, what I found that was very thrilling to me, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's not easy to, um, to jump on a production that's going to tell the story of the royal family, because that implies wealth, and that's the expectation of the audience. They're going to see a ton of wealth and beautiful things. So what excited me was not just doing that, but the fact that, it, that this was wealth within the context of, and this is what my early research told me, uh, within the context of um, a country that was just coming out of a war. So it was 1947, the country was on its knees, there was no money. Um, and so I was. The, we had, therefore, that contrast. We were able to sort of place these these uh, impossibly wealthy people in uh, an unwealthy context. And so I just thought, how great it would be to put these palaces in a in a in a grey and brown, uh, ashen kind of world. Um, and the best way to convey the ashen kind of world was to um, do that through if we were doing it in any interiors at all, was to do it through uh, Winston Churchill's um, bedroom and his, his private quarters in 10 Downing Street. And 10 Downing Street, rather conveniently for us, been hit by a bomb. So um, um, it was kind of collateral damage from um, other, other bombs hitting other bits of Whitehall. So um, I ran with that and, and uh, I didn't exactly exaggerate the, uh, the amount of bomb damage, but I just knew that that's not the way Winston Churchill would spend his money on decoration. So we, we were then able to, we had, two con we had the two contrasting worlds and um, we ran with the sort of gray and uh, falling apartness, which I also brought a certain amount of to Buckingham Palace to the, to the 
the, the sort of bowels of Buckingham Palace where all the work gets carried out by private secretaries and people. In listening to you talk about this, I mean, it, it, it sounds as if you both have to uh, create sets that uh, accurately represent the time, but also you're thinking about uh, expressionistically and uh, in terms of the characters who are going to be inhabiting these worlds. Can you talk a bit about that? Yes, of course. I, uh, the other thing I had to keep in mind with, um, with, with, these, with this great world was that um, uh, this, I, I know that this story is going to go on into the, its future, you know, pretty much up to our present day. So it's going to go through my entire lifetime. So um, I wanted to hold back a bit of color so that, you know, we would notice when the 60s arrived. We'd notice when it, uh, without suddenly switching into a, um, into a world of um, Antonio and his blow up and um, Austin Powers, we were able to gradually introduce um, color and the 1960s and a, a new kind of um, um, freedom. Um, so uh, I've, I've just forgot what your question was. I do beg your pardon. Oh, about, um, I think you were answering it, but um, <laughs> in ter- I, I think the second part of it was in terms of um, the characters who inhabit these sets. And I mean, that could, you know, just um, going off of that with uh, Queen Elizabeth, mm-hmm. you know, it's a fascinating look at how she became who she is today. You know, it's a side of her that we have not seen before, portrayed. Uh, portrayed. Can you talk a bit about that? Yes, I mean, that's, uh, in a way, you're sort of carrying, uh, it's an extraordinary story, an absolutely extraordinary story. And you, uh, your job, my job, is to make, is to place it somewhere where people are going to believe that story. So in a way, you grab hold of all of the emotional things that are happening to her, like the crazy coronation, the biggest wedding you've ever seen, um, the up, being uprooted from her favorite house, Clarence House, and taken back to Buckingham Palace. So you need to kind of build into your architecture and your decoration um, why she might feel reluctant to do that. So you, you make Clarence House her favorite house, um, sunny and bright and optimistic, um, so that you notice when she's uh, unwillingly taken back to Buckingham Palace, um, which is a miserable, desolate place, um, and which the royal family themselves refer to as the office. So um, it doesn't feel like a home. I did the tour of Buckingham Palace, and it doesn't feel like a home. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was to, to kind of, uh, one thing I discovered through my research was in the private apartments, um, she has her own bedroom, he has his own bedroom, there are drawing, there are dressing rooms separating the two of them. And so I thought a great thing to do would be to get a perfect, perfectly framed through doorways image of her bed from his bedroom and vice versa, because that tells a lot about the story. Um, I, I think the real thing is very close to that, but probably not quite so beautifully, uh, probably not quite so photogenically composed. Mm-hmm. And, and working with the costume designer, the cinematographer, uh, the director, uh, how, how, what is that collaboration like between uh, all of your department heads uh, in creating this consistent vision? Well, one of the things I did when I first had my very first meeting with Stephen Daldry, and, and knowing as well I was going to have to work with three other directors, and I didn't had not met any of them um, on this uh, with regard to this project. Um, one thing that Stephen and I were very very keen to take with us was the um, the idea of this happening in this in this um, uh, post war grey world of austerity, um, and to juxtapose those two things. The, which I've just talked about, um, and fortunately, the other three directors who were the, who uh, were willing to go along with that as well. So what I did was I constructed a book of images, of favourite images of of how to convey this. And um, when Michelle Clapton arrived on the scene, she and I had a meeting. I showed her my book. She showed me her pictures. Fortunately, our two worlds in our heads were absolutely the same world. And similarly with Adriano, um, Adriano is very keen to have things in the foreground to frame, have to frames within frames. And so that whole thing of framing the beds within doorways um, uh, appealed to him. Um, and 
you know, it was a sort of judicious use of, of uh, when to give him windows, when not to give him windows, when to give people places they could sort of spy on other people. Um, so all of those things kind of came together and the three of us uh, exploited that uh, world, with that way of telling the story through that architecture. Before we go, I know we're running out of time here, but I wanted to ask you about your Oscar win for Shakespeare in Love and what that recognition meant for you. Uh, it was fantastic. I mean, it, it, it gave me choice. You know, people people noticed me, and uh, one of the people who noticed me um, was Phil Kaufman, who directed Quills. And uh, so suddenly, having won an Oscar, I was then working with the man who made the right stuff. So, you know, that doesn't come any better. Uh, things don't come any better than that. So um, it, it changed things very much in terms of recognition and, and gave me a I, I, I was able to choose things rather than just have things, rather than be desperate. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, now, are you are you coming back for the second season of The Crown? I have come back, and we've shot ninety nine point nine 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 percent of it. We still have a little bit to, to pick up, but yeah, and season two is mine. Um, and again, working with with four directors. Can you give us any hint of what we can expect from next season? What you can expect for the next season is that it moves about a heck of a lot more. Um, so, you know, we've got um, the Royal Yacht Britannia and travels in Antarctic, um, Africa, uh, the South Seas. Um, so all of those things have been, we've shot um, using various locations. Antarctica, not very far from Elstree Studios. Um, uh, you know, we found a sort of quarry which we filled with snow and got some huskies and suddenly we have Antarctica. Um, otherwise we were doing things in South Africa. So the whole thing moves around a lot more. But um, what's gratifying is I think that uh, from what I've seen of it and from what I know of it is that when you return to the sets we're familiar with from season one, we recognize them, that, you know, that there is a, there is a familiarity to that. I look forward to seeing it. Martin Childs, thank you so much, and congratulations on your work. Thank you. You're welcome.